we're back with another video and uh, this one's going to be an interesting one. About a decade ago, I made this. This is a little Raspberry Pi based video player that sat down at a military museum that I've volunteered for for all those times. And I've been there for more than 10 years now. In any case, uh, this has gone through multiple iterations. Uh, the original screen in this was a little bit bigger as you might guess from this facade. And it was a uh, reversing monitor that I had fixed and uh, fixed very loosely. It died about five years later. In any case, this is a new little display we put in. And uh, yeah, this gets quite a hiding from different uh, patrons to the museum. And a uh, little two watt speaker, it resonates quite well. But recently, uh, the sound stopped working, namely today. So I brought it back to find out what the problem is. Let's have a quick look in here. We can see the underside is a bit rat's nest, um, Lucas wiring style. And there's a bit of dirt off the table and stuff under here. I may or may not be able to clean that. I did originally treat this with Neat's foot oil. They have a very basic uh, power connection on the back, which is a 5.5 mil uh, plug instead of a 2.1. It's a size I used to use. And uh, this used to have a base plate screwed onto it. I may end up having to design one again. Um, and you can see here when I first made this, I put all the arrows on the front and everything, and then I put the bottom piece on backwards and had to glue it in the other way around. Um, but in any case, uh, it's together. So what I'm gonna do is I'll fire it up first, we'll have a look at the problem, and then we'll start uh, pulling out its intestines. Now, the camera angles on this are gonna be a little bit funny, largely because uh, when I made this, I uh, was working in a different form factor with things. So uh, we're gonna reach into the back of the socket here. And this I didn't design to be serviceable, really. Um, this is back in a time where I was using everything I could from a pile of junk. I didn't have good stuff to work with. All right, that should be pretty good. Let's get a light source in there. And we'll have a look. I think we've got our two clips on the back of the plug there. I hope that's the right way around. I think positive is on the center pin, which is good. So let's plug this in to a temporary source here. All right, that sounds good. I heard a pop from the audio, which generally means we should have some picture soon. This is volume control here, by the way. Let's see if we have sound. Last time, I'm pretty sure it was just a, a lead fell off the pot. Last time the audio stopped working. In a few seconds, this should boot up. Should see a picture. There's our Raspberry Pi boot. Then it should load into XBMC. And then it should auto play a playlist, which is off a memory stick, which you'll see hiding in here. I'm probably gonna redo that memory stick. Uh, it's been running for a long time, um, but that will probably mean I need to redo mount points and all sorts of other stuff. So the playlist is correct. We'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm probably gonna clone the SD card on this and try and make it work as well. And LCD screens are, Oh, I had a short out. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> All right, that's why I have fuses on things. We'll be back in a minute. All right, we didn't manage to kill anything, and it looks like it's booting up just fine. And I think I identified that problem. There's that little white RCA plug there. I've put a bit of blue tack in the way to stop it sliding down. But I'm pretty sure the ground on that slipped down and touched the um, side switch. And this, yeah, this thing is unreliable too. Anyway. Um, so I think that little white lead, um, which you can see right about there, slid down and touched this. That could also, I'm pretty sure that is actually connected to the audio board. That could have caused our problem and killed the audio. Anyway, uh, let's continue on. Oh, and now we have audio. Look at that. It is a little bit picky at the moment, so I think maybe there's some, been some uh, problems there might be just a loose connection so we'll uh, let this carry on and then I might pull it out and do some rework on it let's go to another documentary we don't want to get done for uh, copyright here yeah our audio is a bit picky let's tap this yeah oh that that made a difference it might be the trim pot again all right we'll uh, we'll shut this down gracefully 
and uh, we'll find out, we'll pull everything out and see what's going on. All right, so I've had to turn the air back on, it got a bit hot here, so excuse the background noise. But uh, there's a few things going on in here. So, what I used for the buttons on the front was a keyboard module that I hardwired just the certain um, ASCII characters together to buttons. So that's what's on the other end of this, is a USB lead that runs that, which has now got stuck somewhere. Now this was back when they used full-size SD cards on a Raspberry Pi. Um, what model is this? This is a Raspberry Pi 2011 model. It's one of the made in China ones too. Um, but I'm going to clone that SD card to a file. I didn't have a good regulator at the time, so I bought... Actually, this might have been a later mod in an urgency thing. This is just a car cigarette lighter um, regulator, but it's working fine. Now, I might add that I really did have plans here of stripping everything down if there was a major problem, but at the moment, I feel like it's not a major problem, so we might be just bodging this up again. But we will avoid our short circuit issue with that at least for the short term. All right, these yellow leads are the uh, shutdown button. Now they are one, two, three, four pins in on the inside edge. We want to untangle some cables to make things a little bit more sensible here. The audio amplifier board, which is a JCAR kit, is actually on top of this shelf. I think it's probably fine. But now we're in here, we can have a look at the back of the uh, trim pot in here and see what's going on with that. Somebody may have broken the trim pot, you know. Or it might have just eventually worn out. So that's interesting. Basically what my plan is to do here is to pull everything off and um, get some of this cleaning solvent. And any of the major connections is just give them a clean up and uh, just check that everything's all right. So we'll do that and we'll be back. Well. Evidently, 10 years ago, me was definitely strapped for cash. I cut a lot of corners on this. Um, so let's clip onto here, and we'll clip onto here. Hopefully we can power this up, and we can check the amplifier. Let's wait for the magic smoke. Well, let's have a look here. We're only pulling 0.2 amps, so we're all right. Um, so we should have a screen up in a minute. That needs to go a little bit further up in there. It's all hanging out for a little bit at the moment. Um, I'll wait for it to boot up. The screen is lighting up, Raspberry Pi is coming up. We're back once it's fired up. All right, I think I found my problem. Poking around where the, um, the cables connect to the coil and the speaker. So I think that's why it sounds so horrible. The speaker's shot. So that's where it is, it's that little point right there. That's a pain because that's glued in to all oblivion, that could be hard to get out. Today the relics of the killing fields and the deadly tunnels beneath them yeah. are once again seeing the light of death. Somebody's overdriven the speaker. They've left it up at maximum. But for the time period it's done, it's done really well. That's not too bad. I could just poke it and leave it like this for a little bit. But I'm going to have to find a new speaker of that size, or I'm going to have to rebuild it from scratch. It might be easier to do the latter. Alright, for now we're going to stuff its guts back in, and uh, I'm going to order some bits, I think. I think a slightly bigger display, some better looking buttons, and a uh, more robust speaker, being as I've got a few dollars to throw at this, and uh, we're going to fix all of this stuff up and do it properly. I can still recycle most of the parts out of this. I'm going to keep the original Pi in there just because the programming took me quite a while to get right. And uh, if it's not working, or if it's not broken, I'm not going to fix that bit of it. Um, I am going to make some backups though in case this happens again. And uh, yeah, I think I can get another Raspberry Pi of that model for like 10 bucks. They go really cheap now. So, uh, all right, we'll uh, do some homework. We'll come back when we've got more bits. Hopefully it doesn't take too long.